In this video, I'm gonna talk about the five habits that every man needs to do in their life to succeed. And if you skip any one of these, I can guarantee you, you're gonna have a big hole in the bucket of the things that you're trying to do. So make sure you watch all of them. Most of the things that guys try to do in life, they try to scramble and they always think that they can work harder. If they just work hard, if they just grind harder, they're gonna get somewhere, right? This whole game of the hustle. I can tell you, you don't need to hustle. You just gotta take proper and precise action in the way that makes the most moves. What I mean is you wanna find the small levers that make the biggest impact and just focus on those. The 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. 20% of your actions are probably gonna move 80% of your business. So in this video, I wanna make sure that you can see these five levers that I utilize in my life and the guys that go here at GA and hang out with me in this studio in the sole intensive purpose on how they can leverage these five levers in their life to absolutely fucking crush it in the game of business. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betrayed Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. Production. Your ability to produce in a consistent fashion on a daily basis is absolutely critical to being able to reach your goals. It's so critical that you can't have anything get in the way. And for most men, what they do is they ignore their health. And because they ignore their health, they're getting sick all the time, which knocks out days of production, or they just don't have a lot of energy, they don't have a lot of stamina, they can't work a 16 hour day if they really need to, they can't grind because they don't keep their body in shape. They're, you know, they're not going to the gym, they're not lifting, they're not doing cardio, they're not watching their diet. And so this is a huge sandbag, a huge ball and chain on their productive value. And when they are working, they can't concentrate. They keep getting distracted because they got too much stimulants in their body, too much caffeine or too much sugar or something going on. And so they just don't feel good. They just can't focus. So if you guys ask anybody who's ever been like on a keto diet, they'll tell you the same thing. They'll say, yeah, I can focus better than I ever can. And I've got a lot more mental clarity because their diet is cleaned up. I'm not telling you you have to be on a ketogenic diet. I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to tell you all about that. But what I am here to tell you to do is you got to get your diet and you got to get your health in check. This is going to be the greatest determining factor for you being able to push forward and push through your goals. So many things in your biology hinge on this like your hormone levels, your energy level, your focus. Without these things, it's gonna be hard to do anything, any of these other things, like having a morning routine. Sure, you can have the greatest health, but if you don't have some of the habits in place of a morning routine, it's not gonna work well. How do I know? Because the guys in my program who get their morning routine down, who are doing their morning journaling, doing their morning calm, doing their emotional releasing work, outperform consistently the guys who do not. They actually succeed. The guys who don't do that, have a hard time being successful in any endeavor in their life, even in the program, because you being able to manage this six inches between your ears is the most important thing possible. If you can't do that, you're not gonna go to the gym, you're not gonna work on your health. So your morning routine, your ability in the morning to get yourself right for the day in a conscious fashion is absolutely critical. I don't care what your morning routine is, but it needs to incorporate the things that matter with regards to your psychology. And of course, it's gonna probably include your fitness. It doesn't have to. Sometimes I do it in the afternoon, sometimes I do it in the morning. But in the morning, what always happens without fail is me managing my own emotional state. When you're running a business and you're being a father and you have a family and you've got other guys' lives on the line and you're responsible for this shit, yeah, it can get spicy. Not only can it get spicy, it can get absolutely downright fucking overwhelming. And so you, being the leader, being the hero, being the champion for the people that you're working for or the people that you're working as the leader of, like the boss or the CEO or the executive, business owner, you have to be able to get your psychology on point all the time. You already can tell. When you don't get this going right, everything else starts falling apart. It's absolutely critical that you do this. And because you have a good morning routine, that means you can plan out your day effectively, especially in the category of deep work. What do I mean by deep work? I mean that four to six hour block where nobody bothers you. You know, most important decisions that happen that make your business move forward are happening in a place where you're undisturbed. If you're running a business, everybody wants your time and attention every minute of the day. You barely get two or three minutes of not interrupted time. And when that happens, it makes it easy to just keep going like, well, I got this next thing going, I got this next thing going, I got this next thing going on. And you end the day thinking, yeah, I was productive as hell, but I didn't get shit done. And this is a problem because you, as a business owner, as an executive, you need to be able to focus on the things that are gonna make the business actually move forward. 
And if you're stuck in like just Anderson and emails or on Slack channel or in meetings all day, and all you're doing is just coordinating the business, you're not actually building the business. And so your ability to go into deep work is absolutely essential. And you need to carve out a large chunk of time, like three hours minimum. Maybe you don't need that. Maybe you just need an hour and a half. But I find that for guys that can really knock this out, then it makes them grow in other areas. In other words, they learn to delegate properly. They learn to not be, have their hands on all the little nitpicky things that they don't need to be a part of. You don't need to do that. You gotta learn to push this stuff off and start holding true to your deep work time. And you're gonna have to train your staff in order to handle this too, because they won't be able to handle it. They're so dependent on you that they're not gonna be able to do anything with, with, their, with their time because they think that they have to have every little decision come from you. So you learning to delegate this property is gonna free you up massively. And because you're willing to go into this deep work mode, there's going to be a part of you that is willing to educate yourself on new things. Continuous education. I know I don't really have to say this, but you should always be looking for a better way to do everything that you're doing. So in your deep work time, obviously you're going to be able to start going in. You're going to be able to read a book. You're going to be able to implement what you found in that book into the next project that you're doing. Your ability to educate yourself properly in the right fashion is absolutely critical. You can't just stop. You can't stop reading books. You can't stop going to the workshops. You can't stop doing those things. Because you know that just it just takes one pivot, one small decision can actually alter the trajectory of your business. So obviously, constantly improving yourself means to continuously educate yourself in every area that you can where you need help in. But it's not enough to just keep continuously educating yourself. It's not enough to just have a morning routine. It's not enough to keep working on your diet and your health. It's not enough to just focus on deep work. You have to do a return and report. And what do I mean by a return report? Well, guys, in my program, what we do is we call it a general's tent. In the general's tent, what we do is on Sunday morning, we go back and reflect on our entire week and how we hit our targets. Did we hit our targets? What needs to shift? What needs to move? What's working? What's not working? What needs to shift? So you should have some sort of a system where you're actually returning and reporting what you're doing every week. This game of continuous improvement doesn't just happen on a daily basis. It happens on a weekly basis, happens on a monthly basis, happens on a quarterly basis, and a yearly basis. And you should have a system in place in order to make this happen. If you really want to crush all of your goals, if you really want to hit it out of the park this year and just really win what we call the impossible game, it's absolutely imperative that you follow these five things. Now, I know this video isn't really in the relationship space, and that's mainly what I talk about, but there's so many guys that come through this room here Hundreds of guys come to this room and they're always dealing with the same issues. All men typically are handling the same issues. It's either they're trying to get laid or they're trying to get paid and they're trying to figure out the best way to do both. Only after that did this conversation of purpose and why they're here on this world even starts to happen. And so I want to make this video for you so that you could just know like the overarching cursory view of like how we do things and how we kind of crush habits. Are there other ways of doing it? Sure. But what we found is that if we keep it simple, then guys will follow it. If we make it very straightforward, guys will do it. And even then, it can be a hard thing to do. Most guys don't want to do anything because it makes them uncomfortable. And the greatest determining factor for you, and here's a bonus one, is your ability to see fear and step through it and take action is always going to be your greatest asset in the ability to be successful in life. It always comes down to that. Something comes up, guy gets scared, he backs off. Something comes up, Guy gets scared, he jumps off the cliff and goes. Sometimes he fails, most of the time he fails, but sometimes he wins. And every failure is actually kind of a win because he learns something. And eventually, if he keeps at it, he's gonna eventually win. And so the greatest determining factor in this room of guys, top performers, maybe that's you if you're watching this video, is your ability to see fear and step through it. That's the definition of courage. Courage isn't just oh, I'm not afraid, I'm gonna do it. Courage is, I'm fucking scared, and I'm gonna do it anyway because I see what it's worth. So if you would like to keep leveling up your life and you'd like a few more tips on that, watch this video right here. And if you like this video, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you wanna see more, and I'll see you in the next one.